Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me for a long overdue update on this, my Colorado Red Ford Focus ST. Now for those of you who saw the first video, you'll know that I bought this car around a year ago from Bristol Car Auctions and I drove it all the way home to Cornwall. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't seen that video, please do take a look if you fancy it. I'll pop the link in the description below. So, leading on from that last video, have I done the bodywork and the jobs that were required on this car to give it back a bit more of a standard look? Um, have I been driving this car? Do I even still like this Focus ST? Well, I'm going to share all of that in this video, as well as a brief telling of the Focus ST story. So please do stay tuned for all of that. And if you like your fast forward content, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, please click like and do leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If you've got any questions, thoughts, observations about any other cars, please do get in touch. Anyway, on with this video, we start with me a few months ago when I was thinking about getting this car into the body shop. So it's time to take the Red ST into the body shop. If you watched the previous video where I featured buying the car, then you'll know that the front bumper is absolutely peppered with stone chips. So it needs to go in and have that painted. Plus we've got some lacquer peel there on the back bumper. So that's also gonna be painted as well. Now, whilst it's in there, we need to fit all the standard front dressing kit on the car again. So an original front grille, original bottom grille, and those fog light bezels that have been painted by the previous owner also being swapped back to standard units, as are around the back. We've got the fog light and the reverse light bezels also that have been painted. So they're being swapped over and back to standard as well. Now, when I bought the car, I put a message out on the Ford Focus ST owners forum to ask if anyone had any of the standard front grills and front fog light bezels. And a big shout out to Mark. Thanks very much. He came back to me with this. So we've managed to source ourselves an original bottom front grill. But to be honest, Finding the rest of it was actually quite difficult. Uh, if you're familiar with these cars or any Fords really of this age, then you'll know that the front badge actually moves across to be able to open the bonnet. That's where the bonnet opening mechanism is and they tend to break. And the only way to gain access to that is to break your grill, get into the bonnet and then replace the grill. So those front grills quite short supply or quite expensive. So I was thinking, what, what could I do about that? And this car came up, uh, a Performance Blue ST3 with all of the standard kit there in the front and in the back. So I bought the car. The car's got aftermarket Fox alloy wheels on it. So I thought that what we would do is swap over all of the front grills and bezels on this car for this one. This one needs to have a little bit of paint as well. As you'll see, the towing eye cap is missing. We've got one of those that needs to be painted and also a little bit there on the bottom of the front bumper. So both cars are going into the body shop today where they're going to do all of the work, swapping all the bits over, painting both front bumpers, painting the rear bumper on this, and then look forward to bringing them back and uh, showing you the results. Now these cars are both manufactured in the same year. In fact, this one's just a couple of months newer. However, there are some subtle differences between the cars. Sure, this is an ST3, and therefore a standard, it comes with front headlight washers, Xenon headlights, it comes with the full Recaro leather seats, uh, heated front seats, traction control in this car. But this one also has the digital dual zone climate control, which is a nice option on this car. But one difference between these that I did notice when I jumped in this blue car in comparison to the red one, is that the dash in the blue car actually illuminates red. And the one in the red car illuminates green. I believe the later cars, the facelift cars, all had the red dash illumination. So just a subtle difference that I noticed I thought I'd share with you. Anyway, let's take these cars into the body shop.
The Colorado Red really does suit this car so, so well. It looks fantastic, particularly with those optioned black bezeled headlights up front. And now back on that original standard look with those gray plastic grills and front fog lamp surrounds. You'd be proud to turn up anywhere in this car. Just the right balance of show and go. Now, as you will have seen there in the pictures of the refurbishment work I've had done, as well as having the front and the rear bumper painted, where I also had the rear diffuser painted red, MK Body Shop painted this driver's side of the car, getting rid of that dull kind of pink finish that was on the car that you would have seen in the first video. As for the Ford badges back and front, well, you'll see they're back to their original blue. And it turns out all I needed to do was to peel off the red Ford overlays, nice and simple. Also, I purchased the vinyl inlays for the ST badges from DMB Graphics and I freshened them up too. As for under here, well, the car's been into Torpoint MOT where it's had a new cam belt fitted and a full service, giving me the confidence to keep driving and enjoying this Focus ST. Oh, and by the way, as for the blue ST, well, it turned out really well too. Here, take a look at this. Now, before we take too much of a look at my car, well, let's familiarize ourselves with the Focus ST, with all the cars that have worn this ST badge. And well, I suppose the Focus story started back in 1998 at the Geneva Motor Show with the first generation, which was a game changer in the medium sized car sector and a radical revolution from the by then tired Ford Escort. Now I've featured a full video on the groundbreaking Mark I Focus. So do take a look if you fancy it. I'll pop a link in the description below. As for the ST then, well, the ST badge stands for Sports Technologies. And well, strictly speaking, it is the spiritual successor of the XR cars from the 80s and 90s, of which I'm a really big fan. Now for the past 50 years, well, Ford have reserved their premium rally inspired cars for the RS badge, giving us the XR and more latterly the ST with high performance, sporty looks and real street cred on a budget. In reality, for all intents and purposes, the Focus ST should have been the Focus XR3i, and in fact was sold as the Focus XR5 Turbo in Australia. So back to that first Ford Focus. And well, it took Ford nearly four years to bring to market a hot version of that car, which is odd really given the car's agile chassis and Ford's history and big customer base for performance variants of their cars. Nonetheless, it took until March 2002 for the first Ford Focus to wear the ST badge to go on sale. Sold with three doors and five doors as a hatchback and as a pretty cool estate, the ST170 was developed by Ford's Special Vehicle Engineering with a little help from Cosworth. The two litre ZTEC was renamed Duratec and equipped with high compression pistons, larger valves in the cylinder head, variable valve timing, high lift cams and a bigger exhaust manifold. The result, 171 brake horsepower and a car that liked to be revved. And having had a few ST170s, well, I will vouch for the fact they do need to be revved to get the best out of them and to achieve that sub eight second not to 60 time. The styling of the ST170 was subtle, but I've always thought them very smart cars and easily distinguishable as the higher performance model when compared with the standard Focus. I like the 17 inch multi-spoke alloys, that honeycomb grille, the bespoke ST170 headlights and both the part leather and full leather interior options. Also, the additional instrument binnacle is a nice touch and helps make you feel like you're in something sporty, albeit with the emission of a turbo gauge. That was reserved for the Mark I Focus RS. And I'm not gonna go into that car here in this video. If you do wanna learn a little bit more about the Mark I Focus RS, I do own one. Do browse my channel, you'll see other videos on that car. Now in 2005, the Mark I Focus made way for the Mark II. And this time, Ford were pretty much straight out of the blocks with an ST and they were not being subtle about it, promoting the Mark II ST in its signature color of electric orange. Compared with the ST170, everything was increased and upgraded. Power was up from 171 to 225 brake horsepower. The number of cylinders climbed from four to five, with the Mark II ST receiving the inline five Volvo engine. The naturally aspirated Mark I turned to a turbocharged ST in Mark II form. Alloy wheels increased in size to 18 inches, the exhaust doubled to two pipes, 0 to 60 was reduced by 1.5 seconds to 6.5, the list goes on and on. This was the all new 
bigger and better ST, delivering fantastic performance, excellent road holding, and the looks to boot. Jeremy Clarkson reviewed the car on Top Gear and he loved it, giving it the nickname, the Ford Asbo. In 2012, well, we saw the return of a four cylinder ST as the third generation Ford Focus ST arrived. Once again, power went up, this time to 250 brake horsepower, coming from the car's two litre EcoBoost engine, delivering a 0 to 60 time of 6.2 seconds. For the first time, a diesel ST was available, delivering 183 horsepower. This was Ford's first diesel hot hatch, really. That is if you don't count the Mondeo ST155. Now the ST170 and the ST225, as this car became known, well, they came in three and five door body styles. But as for the third generation Focus, it was only available as a five door in hatchback or estate. The Mark III Focus ST was extremely well specced, particularly in ST3 form, and it was just as quick in real world terms as the outgoing Mark II Focus RS. Oh well, up until that point, it was kind of the trend really, as the ST took the place in performance terms of the outgoing Focus RS. In 2016, well, Ford launched their ST line, which really is a sporty trim level applied to the wider range of their cars. And I can't help thinking that it kind of dilutes the ST brand, but I'm certain it was a very smart marketing move by Ford. Right, let's bring ourselves right up to date with the fourth generation Focus, which launched in 2018. And in 2019, we once again got a high performance ST model available as a hatchback or estate with either petrol or diesel engines. The EcoBoost petrol engine was retained from the Mark III with capacity increased to 2.3, matching the then Focus RS. Producing 276 brake horsepower, the Mark IV ST hits 60 miles an hour in 5.7 seconds and goes on to achieve 155 miles an hour. Nowadays, with the absence of that Halo model RS, which Ford discontinued with the Mark III, for now at least, Ford rely on the ST to spark consumer interest in the Focus and in all the other cars that wear the ST badge. ST versions of the Fiesta and the Puma are also produced, but as with the Escort before, it is the Focus that wears the performance crown in their range. I could go on about the Focus ST range all day, but I'm gonna stop there and well, get back to this car, to my Mark II Focus ST, or ST225 as I called it earlier, and that's thanks to the power output from that lovely 2.5 litre, five cylinder turbocharged engine. It really does just crack, bang, perform so brilliantly. And well, as for mine, I suppose we can't really call it an ST225 anymore, maybe an ST275. I don't know, but that's all thanks to the modifications that are put onto this car, which I ran through in that first video. Maybe one day we'll find out. Maybe I'll take this car onto a dyno at some point, run it up, and let's see what power this car's actually putting out. Now the Mark II Focus ST, well, it came in three trim levels, ST, ST2, and ST3. This is an ST or an ST1, and by far the rarest of the three options, thanks largely due to the buying public at the time, going in and buying STs and opting for that upgrade to a two or three. Early ST ones, again like mine, well they don't come with traction control. No Xenon headlights and they come with a single disc Ford stereo. Whereas the ST2, well it does come with traction control and the Xenon headlights and headlight washers and the single disc Sony stereo. Both the ST and the ST2 are fitted with the lovely cloth Recaro seats with those body colored inserts. They just look fantastic. And I actually prefer them to the leather interior. As for the ST3 then, well, that's the fully loaded ST. It comes with all of the ST2 options, as well as an upgrade to a Sony six disc CD player. It comes with reverse parking sensors and the Recaro seats are heated and trimmed in leather. All the ST3s come with the sculpted rear bench seat, which only has two seats, so all ST3s are four seaters. In 2007, Ford launched the ST500, which was limited to a production run of only 500 cars. The ST500 was an ST3 with the seats trimmed in red leather, 
and all cars were painted in panther black with silver stripes and all came with a plaque denoting the ST500 limited edition. In 2008, the Mark II Ford Focus and with it the Mark II ST underwent a facelift and the changes well, they brought about a new and restyled front and rear bumper and a redesign to much of the interior, including new dash clocks, optional Bluetooth and DAB, and push button start. Inside the car then, well, I just love these Recaro cloth seats with these inserts. In fact, they were a big part of the appeal for the car for me, and that's why I was looking for an ST1 or an ST2 over the ST3. And the reason I went for an ST1 intentionally was because, well, I like the idea of it being the car in its most basic form, driver focus, less driving assist, just like all the hot hatches of years ago used to be. I know many of you would disagree. I'm sorry about that. But for me, it was an ST1 all the way. I'd love to know the history of my ST1 because you see, along with the ST1, 2 and 3 trim levels, well, Ford offered a number of options for these cars. And whoever had this car knew, well, they went crazy on the options list. This car comes with an electric sunroof, auto headlights, the upgraded Sony stereo, and the extremely rare cloth sculpted rear bench seat, which was only available on these very early cars. So just like an ST3, my ST1 is only a four seater. As for the rest of the interior, well, I haven't had to do very much to it at all really, other than kind of keep it clean and return these blower and vent controls to their original knobs. And as for replacing the worn gear knob, well, it turns out that the early Mark II ST gear knobs are actually really difficult to find. Ford don't sell them anymore and they do not come up very often. It's taken me nearly a year, but I got one and it arrived yesterday. Here it is. I'll put a picture on the screen of it now. Much better condition. It cost me 50 pounds though. And uh, well, I'm gonna swap it over now. And whilst I do, I'll tell you that I also bought from the same seller an original airbox and crossover pipe. Not that I intend to fit them right now. It's just nice to know that I have them in the event that I wanna return this car to a more standard look. I'm fortunate enough to own a Mark I and a Mark III Focus RS. And as such, it would be easy for me to, I suppose, discount this ST and discount its performance. But in truth, this car drives absolutely amazingly. It's wonderful. It's sufficiently different to the RSs. And I think that's largely due to that wonderful five pot engine that sits out front. This car well, it feels so tight, it feels so well put together and it performs. Well, it performs brilliantly. I love driving this thing. The power is very usable. The handling is excellent. I look forward to every journey in this car. I never drive this car without smiling. This car certainly has found a place in my heart. I, well, I absolutely love it. It appears to me that all of a sudden, well, these early pre-facelift Focus ST Mark IIs, they seem to be disappearing from the roads. These used to be a daily sight. You couldn't take a journey, long or short, without driving past a Ford Focus ST Mark II. And now, well, they're a real rarity as a car spot. I can't quite believe it, but then having said that, I suppose the newest of these Mark II Focus STs pre-facelift cars is what, 15 years old now? incredible but these are fast forwards and like all fast forwards that have gone before well we can expect values to go up any car that's pioneered change or been iconic they do climb in price and i would put this car in that category in fact i think that this year is possibly the final year where you can get into one of these for quite reasonable money and if i'm honest 
I think some of the really good cars have already started to climb in price. But don't worry about this one, I'll certainly be keeping it. I really, really enjoy driving this car. And as for my three focuses, well, I intend to get all three together and at a car show very, very soon. And I promise to feature it here on the channel. So please do stay tuned for that. And if you've enjoyed coming along for this ride, do click like, do subscribe to the channel for lots more content like this. And don't forget to leave me a, content, a comment. I love to hear from you. Um, thank you so much for coming along. Thanks for joining me and me sharing my ST story with you and a bit of history about the ST. I do hope that you've enjoyed it. And I hope to see you again very soon here at the channel. Thanks again and bye for now. Bye-bye.